just to add on to what you said there, Mark, I agree 100%. The, the, the list of competitors for the Natties in Scotland is much better than it is in Ireland or England. <laughs> I'll have to put that there, so it'll be fine now. Um... <laughs> Welcome back to Natural Strongman, and we are kicking off 2024 with the Scottish Nationals. Thankfully, we have Stephen Wiley, the promoter, joining us, and we also have Willow Brady, who is the under-57 champion from last year. So thanks very much for joining us, guys. Cheers, Matt. Thanks for having us. So there, there was obviously a lot of excitement with the natural, uh, Strongman Natural scene last year, it seems to have increased for this year, if that's possible. From your side, where you're you're organising the first comp of the year, how has it been for you? Yeah, it's been good. It was just 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 busy. Um, so we're taking we're doing a few things a bit differently this year. So, um, kind of stupidly, we're being the busiest one that we've ever had. I'm doing it in one day instead of two. So. Um, makes total logical sense. No, but the, the real reason is obviously, Mark, we've got you coming over, and we're going to do the we're going to do the live stream. So, um, we're going to try and get it done in one day. So, but yeah, the the, the uptake for it's been amazing. We capped it at 125, and we hit 125. So there was a few people missed out. Um, we have lost a few. I heard Matty saying he lost a few just this week. This is the week where it happens. Um. Like two or three weeks out, it's when three weeks out, I think, it's when people make that decision. Oh, I'm not quite ready or whatever. Especially with it, it being a nationals, you tend to see that a bit more prevalent. People be like, "Oh, I'm not quite ready," and this person's really good or whatever. So, yeah, they don't. Um, yeah, they just put it. Into injury and things. Yeah. Does that fear factor come into it where athletes are looking at the lineup and just going, "I'm not going to win this. I I might back out." Absolutely, I think so. I think um, there's there's two sides to it. I think when you're relatively new to it and it's maybe your first year setting one like that, it's easy for people to it's easy for people to do that and look at it. Whereas I think the longer you do it, the more you're kind of like, ah, that person's not that good. They're just showing the stuff that they're good at, or or oh, I don't need to be my best. I'll just turn up and see what happens because sometimes the best comps are the ones that you don't feel ready for. Willow, I, like how grateful are a lot of the athletes looking at you and going, well, she's not in this one. She's already qualified for the world, so we don't have to worry about Willow just yet. Well, I'm doing 64s, um, just for a bit of experience. Oh, I didn't um, even realise that. <laughs> off, so they, they won't be happy at all, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm really keen to just get as much comp experience as I can, to be honest, at this stage. And I actually have a client doing the 57s and the 64s, so either way, one of them was going to be upset with me. <laughs> But, um, and the jump up to 64 I, I know you were you were toying with that last year you you sort of had a feeling you were going to do it anyway but yeah how has it been for you has it been a big big transition um I've not really done anything yet this will be the first thing so I guess you could say I'm still transitioning um it means I don't have to worry about cutting weight, which is really, really nice. Um, I'm kind of sitting about 60 to 61 um, and just not even thinking about that remotely. So that definitely makes a difference, less stress. The events that are coming up for this one, I let Stephen, you can talk us through the, the actual events. Yep. But I know people are very, very excited with, with the lineup that's coming up of events. Yes, yeah. So we tried to do, I tried to do some cool stuff. Um, so we went, we, let's see what we had. Uh, Actual for reps to start. That that's not that cool. Um, we'll, well get to the cool stuff. I think it's quite cool. I don't, I don't know how it is for the Ireland's um one in England's, but there's a weight selection which isn't always done, and it gives up people the opportunity to try and aim for one or two reps at the heavier weight, or try and treat it like an arm wrap um with the the lighter weight. So that kind of mixes things up a little bit points wise, and yep. it it's a good entry. It's a good point of entry for possibly new people as well. I'd say. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to do both the static um lifts. We've got an Apollon's actual deadlift for reps as well. So both both all those the actual overhead for reps and the Apollon's actual deadlift for reps. There's two weight options. Um, so a wee bit of tactics as well. So, um, if you choose the heavier weight option and you don't get it, you don't then get the chance to go for the lighter weight. So you zero it. So there's a chance that people could make that decision and end up zeroing it so there's a wee bit of tactics but the main reason that I went for that was 
because, like you say, people tend to get scared, especially when it's a national comp, and people tend to look at the, the one event. But for a lot of people, that's the overhead, and be like, well, I'm going to zero that, so I'm, I just won't do the comp. So we're like given the option that rather than getting zero points, any any points you get is more than zero. Um, people can do that, get their bad event out of the way, and then and then crack on with the rest of the competition and maybe surprise themselves and a few others. And then the the next event up after that, the third event is. Um, so we've got farmers, which is forty meters, four sets of ten. Um, after that, we have a odd object loading medley. So we went with. I got in touch with the guys at Strength register um and we we have a normal sandbag we have a cube shaped sandbag um a husafel sandbag and a slab sandbag which is kind of like yeah a rectangle a thin rectangle flat rectangle yeah almost the opposite to the cube which is especially at the heavier weights the cube's quite there's no there's no thin part it's quite hard to run away the center of mass of the object is quite far in front of your center of mass so I think that'll be pretty cool, and I think what I've noticed is like a lot of people, no, a lot, of, yeah, yeah, a lot of people have been coming over to the gym and training it, um, and obviously a, a lot of people doing the comp and in the gym already as well. I think people that don't do that are maybe uh-huh. making a mistake. Um, I think they might be looking at it, and being like, mm, that the weights are okay, um, but these sandbags sometimes you only need two two sessions on them and you're fine, but. If you don't get that, I think that people will get caught out. And the, the, for yes. you as an athlete, Willow, exactly that. How important is it to get your hands on the actual equipment? It's absolutely everything. It, to some extent, like you, you wouldn't even know what the weight is in it. You, you couldn't even guess what the weight is in it. It really is just about the logistics of picking it up. Um, and you see that at comps like over and over again, so that like even with something like a shield, if it's slightly different, it completely changes, you know, whether you can clasp your hands or, or not um, and things like that, which completely might change um, yeah, your tactics when it comes to picking it up and loading it. Um, you might be doing it in a different direction. These like with a sandbag, there's only so many ways you can do it, but certainly with things like the slab, you know, there's multiple ways of picking it up carrying it and loading it and um, so it really depends on your levers and everything like that as also like Stephen says you might pick try it once and literally not be able to get off the floor and then the next time you're you're running with it and throwing it over the, the yoke so yeah, it really is it's a really a different event, event. <laughs> this is going to be this is going to be an interesting one to be fair yeah that event for me is is maybe not the best event but it's the one I'm most excited about because it's different and it's never been done before but also just because of the tactics element, so that we're also allowing the guys to choose the order. And what is that you're going to say? I was going to say, I don't know if you mentioned, yes, yeah, so Steve was just about to say, you can choose which order you do the four implements in. And as you load each one, the yoke gets progressively closer to you. So um, you're running less distance with the, the last bag. However, that, yeah, there's a lot of tactics going on there. There's a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with your comp, Stephen, there always seems to be. It's not just turn up and lift the weight. It's yeah, yeah. you've got to have a plan. Yeah, a lot of people. You get a lot of people, especially in Scotland, who say that they'll be like they'll, they'll see a set of events and they'll be like, "That was Stephen that did that." Even yeah. if they've, they've, yeah, I like to always throw one curveball in there for me. Like being the best strong man, being the best strength athlete, and that requires some thinking and stuff as well. So with stuff like that, um, yeah, I, I just love getting stuff like that. Even just one event, making people think. Um, make doing something that's never been done before, doing something that's outside the box, um, or okay. something that's been done before but maybe been forgot about. Yeah, he'll tend to wake up in the morning and shout me through from the the kitchen and be like, "I've got an idea, I'm going to do this." <laughs> <laughs> I think if there's a if there's an event at a comp where you have to think, people go, "That's Stephen." If it's just a horrible, horrible event, they go, "That's Matty." That's definitely yeah. Matty. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, looks quite horrible as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought you were going to say look actually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it could be to be fair. Yeah. Um. So, the the whole buzz around natural strongman this from last year has really carried over, and obviously, there's a lot of announcements coming out with qualifiers in different places. And I know Stephen, you're doing a lot of the the leg work on that. Can you just go through very quickly where the qualifiers actually are and what the pathway is for the Worlds? Yeah, yeah. so obviously the usual ones that we've had have been England, Scotland and Ireland. Um, 
Wales are getting their own qualifier this year. So that'll be the four nations that qualify for the UK and Ireland finals. Um, so the top three from England, Wales and Ireland. No, Scot- top three from Scotland, Wales and Ireland qualify for the UK and Irish finals. The top six from England, they get about double the competitors. It's a bigger country. So the top six from England go, and then the top five from there qualify for Worlds, which is kind of the way it's been the last couple of years. Um, but this year we've got two in Europe. So we have Switzerland and we have Belgium, which we've still not announced the date of. We're hoping to get that locked in ASAP. Um, we have one in Canada in the East Coast, I believe. Yeah. Um, Two in America, one already put out there um, on the West Coast, one in the East Coast coming very soon, one in Australia, and I think that's it. And obviously the online qualifier for Worlds as well. So, yeah, there's, there's loads of options for the athletes, and, and yeah, we, we're keen to get as many countries involved. We want Worlds to be Worlds. We want each country being represented well, as well as we can. Like, I, I've, I've seen bits and pieces from feedback from different gyms and promoters around the world that have been asking can we have a qualifier can we do one can we host one are you a little bit surprised at how much interest there has been or you just expected it no i'm not surprised i'm, I'm actually surprised that, that, that there's no more like but i guess i've always been like that we like when i see something i'm I think there's a gap in something. I'm like, I want to do that. I'm going to do it. So, like, for me, I'm like, I don't understand why Italy, France, Germany, Holland haven't all came forward and been like, we want our own qualifier. Um, I'm, I'm more surprised about that than the amount of people that have. <laughs> but that's just that's just humans, isn't it? They like like to talk about stuff, but not necessarily do it themselves. They're always waiting on somebody else to do it because for for ages as well, we were getting like. Every time we put a post up, we'd get like at least one or two comments on the post and then one or two messages saying, when he's going to do a qualifier in America? And every time we would reply, we'd be like, we're open to it. Do you know anybody? Or do you want to do it? And then it never came to anything. So eventually I put a post up and being like, if you want to do this, make it happen. Like, you, you, we, can, we can't do it. We can't fly four logs, like four deadlift bars unlimited plates and sandbags and whatever else over to America and make it happen. You guys need to do it. Um, I guess the beauty of it is that it doesn't have to be exactly four logs and X number of sandbags. Like the beauty of it being strong man is that many different gyms can take it on just based on the equipment that they've yeah. got as well, which yeah. makes it really, really cool. It doesn't have to be the same qualifiers yeah. in all these different countries. Obviously, you want to keep the standard as high as possible. How, yeah. as a promoter and as one of the founding members, how do you ensure that the standards are met, the, the standards that you would have wanted from the start when you start allowing places to have qualifiers? How do you sort of manage that? Yeah, well, we've, we've just got a kind of document that we said to people that they need to agree to, essentially, that they're going to do so that the minimum standards are required. Um, so that, But ultimately, you're always taking a bit of a gamble um, and... Yeah, you can. You just need to. You need to put your faith in people, and if it doesn't go well, you don't. You don't use them again, and you, you maybe try something else. So ultimately, at some point, we're probably going to get burned by that, and and that that's just the nature of the beast. So, um, we'll just need to hope for the best, and hopefully, not the guys who we've spoken to so far seem really, really switched on, um, really on the ball. So hopefully, um, hopefully we don't, and and it can keep just growing and getting bigger and better. I suppose with it being so new and so exciting and like you say, such a big gap, people will be keen to hopefully do a good job anyway. And yeah. And I know that the one of the huge benefits is the likes of Chrissia, who is doing the Switzerland qualifier, and she actually competed last year. So you know her well. And that's where the I suppose the bigger natural strongman gets, the more you actually get to know these gyms and you know they're doing a good job. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same in Canada. Um, oh, his name's probably left now, but Kyle, Kyle, yeah. Kyle was over for, for Night Worlds. Kyle, Kyle actually did the online qualifier. Um, a funny story. He did the online qualifier and he couldn't upload these videos onto the Google Drive. So he, I had given made the mistake of giving him my phone number and said, send me them on WhatsApp. And he 
was just messaging me stupid <laughs> questions about the qualifier every day. And at one point, I messaged him back and was like, this is my personal number, stop messaging me. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, a, we had a laugh about it when he came over for Worlds. But yeah, we, we got to know him as well. He was super keen. He, you could tell that he just loved Strongman. Um, so yeah, that was good. So yeah, like like you say, there's some countries that were were, were reaching out to or they're reaching out to us that just not had the chance to to meet them or to meet a lot of people from there yet via this pathway. But over time, that's going to get much easier as well. Willow, go to you. Obviously, you're on the coaching and the the uh, athlete side of things more so. But how much of the sort of helping with the promotion side are you actually getting used to now? Um, I don't do any of it, but I am. <laughs> <Do> um, <laughs> Stephen won't let you. Stephen won't let you do anything. No, he doesn't need any help. He's good, but um, he's got he's got the guys to sound board off of and stuff. But um, yeah, it's definitely exciting to be around. Like I've found myself quite immersed in it all in a very short space of time. We're running um like novice stuff up here, mostly like myself and a group of women, and I don't believe that would be happening if it wasn't for probably Stephen's influence and whatnot. Um, so yeah, it's very immersive, but I'm kind of doing my own things and Stephen's doing his own things separately. And then um, actually in the interview with Rhiannon there, she was actually, she was very, very complimentary of you, Stephen. I didn't know what was going on. I think she'd been drinking or something, <laughs> but she was very complimentary. So yeah. The thing is, she, she loves me look and, and Luke openly says all the time that I'm his, his hero and his best friend. So Yeah, you've said that a couple of times about Luke. To it's probably just rubbing off on her. Poor, poor Matty is just left out of this. What's going on? He won't be happy. Yeah, he's a, romance. Yeah, he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll love that. Um, the uh, the lineup that you have for the, the Nationals, yep. I think... Of all of the countries, and I don't mean to insult the the Irish athletes or anything like that, but it seems in Scotland you have a, such a high level of athlete over there. They're they're at a really really top class level. Uh, is it just the the environment that they're in, or you know, is it just in the genes in Scotland? In the water. I think we just we just do strong. <laughs> I think people just it's. I think it's very accessible here. It's probably more accessible. I know England's the, the standards great in England, and and it's just a bigger country with more people in it. But I think it, it's very accessible he, here. I think also having like the Saltmans and stuff, um, as well, and and just loads of like world class athletes and all, all the way through ranks at every level and every like whether it's tested, untested, whether it's the Opens, whether it's weight classes, men, women. There's just world class athletes, so like the the rubber the green type thing. People see people doing it that they've trained with, and just think, oh, I can do that. Um, and yeah, it's just that there's a lot of good gyms here, well equipped gyms, and well connected as well. So yeah, a lot of sharing of equipment and things. Yeah, and I just think it's yeah, it's accessible, um, and it's only going to get more accessible. But yeah, the that is um, the add on to what you said there, Mark. I agree, a hundred percent. The 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 list of Competitors for the Natties in Scotland is much better than it is in Ireland or England. <laughs> I'll have to put that bit. It'll be fine now. Um, the uh, so for for nationals, you've you've just got the nationals this year, whereas you had worlds to put on last year. Is yep. it a little bit of a relief that I know you're going to be still very very busy, but is it is a bit of a relief that you don't have the UK and S or the worlds to deal with? Absolutely, yeah, it, is, it really is. Like, Worlds, Worlds was tough, and there was times when it was, like, really draining, like, and it's just, it's the worry as well of, am I going to get it right? It was the first time that we had done it as well, so, like, we, venue. You get, like even this year, obviously, in Galway, Matty will be able to look at what I did and be like, what did Stephen do well, what did he not do well, what could I do better this time, do you know what I mean, what do I want to replicate, whereas we were kind of going in blind a wee bit, so um, there was that, wait, there was just, like, you're ordering a lot of kit, you're dealing with a lot of people, you're relying on a lot of people getting these stuff on time, even though you've paid for it and stuff like that. You're everything you 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 need to get volunteers, you need a lot of volunteers. We're very lucky that we have quite a, a big gym, we have a great community and we have a lot of help. But even then you're like, have I got enough? Have I got enough kit even with the stuff that sponsors are given, even with the stuff that we've bought and whatever else? Because you're you're doing a deadlift ladder, you need thousands of kilos of plates. Um 
so yeah, it, it was pretty stressful, but it was one of those things that when it was done, I was like, that was amazing, but I'm happy that I'm not doing it again for another three years. The big question everyone's been asking is because obviously there was the battle of the refs last year. Are you going to be yeah. refereeing at this world's? If Matty wants me to ref, then I'm, I'm more than happy to ref. Um, I actually really like refing. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things. At the same time, if he, if he's got refs lined up, I'd be more than happy because I'm, I'll be coaching quite a lot of people there as well. So I'll be happy to, to not take that burden. But if, I'm not going to say no if he asks. And uh, this one's a little bit more, um, I suppose, on a serious topic where... You're one of the promoters that a lot of people know you put your heart and soul into the sport, but you also end up putting your hand quite deep into your own pocket because you are very keen for the athletes to benefit as much as possible. Um, Is it a case of, to minimise that, trying to get sponsors for the, the sport? Or how, how do you see it being sort of consistent going forward that you're able to do this stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm, I'm the kind of person that's always going to make it happen. Um, So, unfortunately, being such a small sport, a lot of the time that results in me physically making it happen, <laughs> either by putting my hands in my own pocket or providing whatever it is that needs provided, making whatever it is that needs made. Um. So, yeah, but obviously there's there's a limit to that. It's not so much, because I listened to the interview you did with Matty as well, I don't see it as much as like a, a life, like a lifespan. I don't see it as being like, it's only not sustainable. It is sustainable, but it's not growable. I can't like... Scalable, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't put more than I'm already putting in. Last year, it was five figures from my own pocket um, that I put into comps. I can't really go much bigger than that. I'm never going to put a hundred grand into it. Um, I don't have a hundred grand to put in it. If I did, I probably would have done it already. Um, so, in order for it to be bigger, we we need help. We need sponsors. Um, so my plan a wee bit different to what you guys are doing over in Ireland. Obviously, Mark, you're coming over to do the live stream. Um, Matt is going to do his as a pay per view. My plan is to to pay for it again out of my own pocket, but I know it's a risk, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get adverts on that. So reaching out to guys like Factory Weights, Strem Shop, Cerberus, SPD, send us your clip, send us your 30-second 30, your 30 clip. We're going to advertise you on this live stream for free. All I ask in return is, is that you watch the live stream so that when these guys watch the live stream, hopefully they can see how good a competition we can put on and how much exposure they can get. And then we can say, by the way, last year at Worlds, we had, I don't know, was it close to 20,000 views, Mark? We we had a lot of views, yeah, UKs. Yeah, we had, we had all that stuff. So if we can do this at that scale and you've now seen the quality of production and what your adverts will look like on that, what can you do for us in return? That's kind of what my plan is. And I think that's yeah. that's uh, one that we've all been sort of pushing from the start, that ideally we want to keep this free because too many people have to pay to actually see this sport. They don't get to see it. Just uh, the normal everyday person doesn't get to really see the sport. And especially with Natural Songman, we've been trying to make sure it's free. So the only way to do that is by getting sponsors in the door. Yep. The... Now, going to another comp, now this, we were talking about nat, uh, nationals and, and the natural side of the sport. However, you have a huge comp coming up as well in March, which is the European yep. Pro Strongman. This is a gigantic comp, which we have to talk about for a minute. Um, yep. First time hosting this, it's first time it's it's going to be run. How much work is involved in this? Um, I mean... It's actually easier to run, I think, than that than like say the nationals are definitely easier to run than that it was because there's enough a small enough amount of competitors that I can run it in, in the gym and I can run it two at a time and it'll still run nice and quick. Um the difference is you you're obviously trying to attract the right the right the right talent um so that you can then get eyes on the live stream and people willing to 
pay for that one so that we can pay the athletes again. I know that, as I say, I listened to Matt's one and he said the same thing, like, none of this money comes to me, none of it ends up in my pocket. Sometimes I don't know why the fuck I do this. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that so it's diff- different types of challenges. We, we need to bring the right athletes in and then we need to promote it in the right way that we can, that people can can see these athletes and watch it because I really believe that it'll be a spectacle just how amazing the athletes are. Um, so, yeah, the, it, it's a different... I guess is what I'm saying. The the lineup is incredible. Absolutely, like some of the names on there are amazing. Willow, yep. you're you're in there as well. Um, how yeah. are you feeling for it? How's the prep been going for that? Yeah, I've been kind of sidetracked prep wise with the Scotland's qualifier, but there's still bits in the mix that are relevant for that. So I'm excited to like really get my teeth sunk in. It's a big change for me. Like from the last year was obviously pushing for podium um at 57s like every comp and this is a very very different ball game so I'm just looking forward to yeah being in the mix and and learning from some of the best I think you um you put out a post where you were a little bit humble um about being in that lineup without taking into account I think that a lot of people know you as the uh, natural strongman world strongest woman in the under 57 so you've you've achieved a huge amount in the sport already and definitely deserve to be in that lineup. But I can imagine there's still a little bit of nerves when you see the people you're up against. Yeah, that's something we've spoken about like on several occasions. It's definitely like a whole different playground. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of nerves, a little bit of imposter syndrome, but I'm sorting that out in my head and just trying to go in and, and have fun mostly. And that's what I need to do. So. I think um, she's going to win. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm down the bookies and I've put my money on. <laughs> I think that just, uh, yeah, just being invited is, is a bit of a win, to be honest. Like, I think the main thing for me is I, I want to show that I was invited for a reason and not just because I'm Stephen's girlfriend. <laughs> Which is yeah. why she's invited. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, are you just hoping she'll win so you can get some of the money back that you're going to have to put into the competition? <laughs> No, I just wanted to get beat to bring her down a notch or two. I was like, like <laughs> she's done five or six comps since she started. This one. one coming up will be my fifth, so I've done and four. Then she she's won them all. So I was like, what can I do to get her beat? I was like, I know, I'll invite her to a comp with Rihanna in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just that's going to be easy. It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, this will be my first suited comp, actually. I got one of the Chaos ones. I'm looking forward to just out of school. pure interest, how are you finding the? Because I've only heard good things so far about the chaos. I've only seen one at once, but I had um, the goat herself show me how to get my bearings in it and stuff. So that gave me a bit more confidence. There was a lot of a lot of hype going on there for, for um, yeah. That that for always helps when you have the designer of the actual suit there. Yeah, to yeah. Get through it. And it was the same size as well. Rhiannon gave me hers to try on, so that's handy. <laughs> Going going forward and looking at next year, I know we're just starting this year, but for Natural Strongman, how big do you see it getting next year, Stephen? I think whether it's this year, next year, the year after, five years' time, it's going to be the biggest participated thing probably in the world. Within reason, obviously, we don't we won't let the participation levels get at Worlds it become that big that people are there who don't deserve to be there and just take away from from the whole experience but I think over the course of the qualifiers and everything that goes in, in with that I think it'll be the biggest thing in the sport in terms of partition, participation levels I very much see it becoming like a, what the IPF is to powerlifting where you go and your, your goal is to win that Worlds and then when you've done that and you then you can be like right cool now, now I'll go and do pro comps and, and and I can start earning some money. Um and that's kind of why with the European Pro Strongman and stuff that I wanted to kind of help with that as well. I know that looks in the Chaos Classic, which is amazing. And um Tyler over in America does Pro Strongman League. So I wanted to add to that, start start building that just now and, and be a part of that where people can get paid so that people can come come world champions and then go and if they want if they want to, then they can crack on and, and start making some money from it. This is one of the things that in the last couple of interviews that has been brought up is that athletes are 
really struggling. Even if they, for instance, go to OSG Worlds and win, they're still out of pocket. Um, and it, it makes it a situation where the top athletes have to really think about, well, well can I compete or do I have to stay at home? Which really yeah. damages the sport in the long run. Absolutely. Like, people, a lot of people just accept, like, oh, this is the way it always is, and the Opens are the best, and it, it, the Opens deserve this because that's the way it's always been. The sport's not a big sport. We're not football, we're not rugby, we're not MMA, we're not boxing, we're not bringing in a lot of money. Maybe the way it always is isn't good, and that's why. Maybe we need to challenge that. Maybe we need to try something new. I don't agree that Gav McNamee should need to be selling his suit so that he can afford to travel to his next comp. I think Gav McNamee should be getting his next comp paid for him. I'm working at Obviously, Gav's coming to my comp, and, and I'm pretty sure he will get paid. Um, but I, I, I want to work on. I want. I want Gav to not have to worry. Do you know what I mean? Gav does how many comps a year? I want Gav to be making enough money from those comps that his next comp, he, he doesn't need to worry. Or promoters can afford to pay for him to come over because we've got money coming from sponsors and, and whatever else, so that these guys can start. Because if we can do that, if we can provide that, then these guys are only going to get better because they they then don't need to have full-time jobs and work night shifts and whatever else on top of everything. So they're only going to get better. Everything's going to get better. But we need to think big. We need to try. We kind of just be happy to take the scraps from from the open men or, or whatever it is. And that's not a dig at the open men. It's just like the, the weight classes is, is my thing. So, um, yeah. Well, I think it's a good point there that it, I don't think anyone's really having a pop at the open men. It's just taking a step back and looking and going, that's only a small part of the sport. Yeah. And the rest of the sport has just been neglected to a point, well, financially anyway, where the, the open men are getting all of the attention financially. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, as well. Is like We're not trying to take away from the open men. Like, as I say, like I, I love the open men. I've got a subscription. I watch all, all, the, all the comps, all the Giants comps and stuff as well. Um, but I, I also watch... I consume probably more competitions than anybody in the world. Maybe not than Luke, but um, I forgot what I was saying there. But basically, yeah, we're, we're not trying to take from them. We're, we're trying it's to bring not, more uh, in. Them versus yeah, us. it's the same as the natties. Like we, we bring the natties in, and people will be like, "Oh, shit, sh this or that." It's not the same. It's not strong, man. I'm like, if you support this, and this is like, so you'll get like some very very small amount of open men who are never the best ones. Probably insecure where, where they lie if this or these other people start getting attention, being like, oh, like this and that. But the point that I'm making is the more people that we can bring into the natties and the more people that we can bring into weight classes and to the women's, that's more people that then subscribe to the likes of Tom Saltman's YouTube channel that lets him get paid more money, that subscribe to Lawsy's YouTube channel. It's a circular economy. Yeah, that, 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 that buys tickets to Giants live shows. Everybody grows by bringing more people in, the whole sport grows. So, if you get small-minded people being like, oh, that weight class is shit, or this is a new weight class, so that doesn't, that's not as valid as the other one, then all they're doing is holding the sport back. I think there's, there's uh, it's exactly like you say, it's the natural side of the sport can appeal to such a wide audience that and, and so many more athletes that would have always looked at Strongman and gone, well, if I want to do Strongman, I sort of have to do PEDs. Whereas now... Yeah it's open to so many people that, that might not just want to do that. There's no problem with any of that or whatever else, but now they have the option to get into the sport. Yep. And those people getting into it, then have a, an appreciation for the people d doing it and at the very top that they would never have had otherwise. So they're then bought into them and they're then spending money on them. And maybe they, they change their mind in the next few years, but actually I've pushed myself and, and now I've learned a bit more by being around and in that environment. And now, now I'm going to take PED as well. Everybody makes money, even the steroid dealers. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just, we're out for everyone, you know? We're trying to help <laughs> That's all we're doing. Nobody gets left behind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, we're we're nearly out of time there. So uh, I'm going to say thank you so much. We're over in uh, Edinburgh on the 28th. Yeah. <laughs> the 28th of January. Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, be I better get the date right. Um, <laughs> 28th, we will be putting out, for everybody watching, we are going to be putting out the link to that live stream within the next couple of days. So keep an eye for that. You'll see it over on Instagram follow GBA Strongman and also follow Irish Strength and Natural Strongman so you'll keep up to date with those uh, announcements. 
And yeah, thank you very much for joining me, guys. It's been a real pleasure chatting to you, and we will see you in two weeks' time. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. See you then. Thank you very much, guys.